to open the closed gate of the local Tibetan authority, in 1904, an expeditionary army led by Colonel Francis' young husband crossed the Naidula Pass and launched its invasion of Tibet. The troops passed Yandong, Jiangsa, and finally reached Lhasa. It was here in Duna, south of Jiangsa, that the British troops encountered the peaceful persuasion and obstruction of the Tibetans and Chinese officials. The result, however, was a massacre of the peaceful hosts by the advanced weaponry of the British. The angry Tibetans decided to resist. They waged a major battle from the fort on Mount Zong in Jiangsa. Unfortunately, they lost. The shaky central government of the Qing dynasty and its official in Tibet offered the local Tibetans no support. The 13th Dalai Lama had to flee Tibet. When the British imperial power entered Tibet, it looked for proxies in Tibet and exerted separatism activities through them. Some of the rulers in Tibetan upper caste also began to move towards the British and the Indians. They sent students to Britain and opened an English school in Jiangsa. However, the subsequent Kasha government punished these people. Their representative Longshar had his eyes gouged out and died in the prison. Living Buddha Radung, a devoted follower of the Chinese government, became regent in 1934. It was Living Buddha Radung who presided over the search for the reincarnation of the late Dalai Lama. Taking advantage of his weakness, however, his political enemies swept him from the stage. They pleaded with the new Dalai Lama Tenzin Jiaozuo for approval of the Sly Dak Dak Nawan Sangrub as the priest's regent instead of Living Buddha Radung. Then they arrested Radung for the crime of asking the central government for help to resume his position. A British man named H. E. Richardson, who was a business representative from the British Indian government in Lhasa, manipulated behind the scenes. Living Buddha Radung was thrown into prison and died there. Since then, the power-hungry Dagdag, who sought independence through British and American influence, had a firm grip on politics and religion in Tibet. As Dalai's mentor, his thoughts deeply influenced Tenzin Jiangsu. In 1946, the Kuomintang government, which just defeated Japan, opened its Congress in Nanjing to draft a constitution. The central government sent an invitation to the local authorities in Tibet. Kasha government decided to send a delegation to the Kuomintang Congress. In 1949, most of China was enjoying liberation. The excited Chinese people started new lives and engaged in large-scale socialism construction efforts. The 10th Pension Lama, in the Tire Temple of Qinghai, thought that Tibet should be a part of this. He pleaded with the People's Liberation Army to drive the foreign influences from Tibet.
老古代，那中央的嘛，师兄呢，那个呃，七月中就到九寨寨，过了呀，等你再打那阵，啊，都是七月中就到位，呃，等你，呃，三月四旬呢，那个，呃，西天的，等七月，咱们去年，古早，打